Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship on this uh, fifth Sunday in the Lenten season. How quickly time has passed, and yet how slowly it seems at times. It's, uh, what, day number four of uh, our stay at home order in the state now, as of uh, Saturday morning, statewide, not just Franklin County. Gives us time to reflect, to rejoice in the good news that God continues to speak to us in his word. He takes dry, dusty lives and breathes life. And that's what we're going to focus on today. That's what we're going to rejoice in together today. Our worship begins with the opening hymn, uh, Christ the Life of All the Living, uh, stanzas one through four of hymn number 420. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forg forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we pause for a moment of silent reflection on God's word and our lives together. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this day is from Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and that I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading from Romans chapter 8. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did 
by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. And those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to, submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus. Lord, the one who will is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, The sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may... Be glorified through it. <clears throat> now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, But Rabbi, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, but they Rabbi, said, A short while ago, the Jews tried to stone me, you, and yet, yet you are going back. back? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Go, wait, let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus I, said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. She replied, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said. And is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. 
When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you, have, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord. They replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, By this time there is a, ba there is a bad odor. For he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you took, that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we to accomplish? They asked, here is this man performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and then the Romans will come to take away our temple and our nation. Then one of them, named Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation, and not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God, to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. And now we pause for a moment with the children. Kids, follow me. We're going to sit down and talk for a minute. I hope you can see what I've got here today. I've got a uh, cake tin that's usually used for making cupcakes. And you see, I've got a problem because with all the stuff going on in our world and you can't go to school, you can't go over to your friends and play, you can't do all the stuff you usually do, I thought it would be really nice if I could make you some cupcakes, some really nice, really cool cupcakes. We could decorate them, make them really inviting and joyful, and, and then I could share them with everybody. But you know what? It's not working for me. I held out the tin and I said, cupcakes, and nothing happened. So I thought, well, maybe I'll do it this way. So I said, one, two, three, go, cupcakes. And look it, it's still empty. What do you think? Uh, maybe I thought I could just snap my fingers and boom, there would be cupcakes, but that, that really doesn't work, does it? Kind of frustrating when we want something to happen and we try to talk it into being, but you know what? We're not God. We can't change the realities that are bigger than we are. We simply have to go with what God gives. And what God gives is his word. And that is what makes the difference. You see, when he speaks, he speaks life. Life into dry, dusty bones of, of despair and hopelessness. Dry, dusty bones that live in dark places where there's all kinds of shadows, all kinds of scary things. When God speaks, there is life. We're going to think some more about what that looks like in the sermon in just a minute. Thanks for joining me today.
grace, mercy, and peace to you. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Our text is the Old Testament reading from Ezekiel 37. A man lies in a hospital bed after a stroke. He's connected to monitors and medicines, and knowing his life has been dramatically changed, he says to his pastor who is visiting, I feel so useless. What am I going to do now? Have you ever felt like that man? A woman confides in her best friend, my husband has his career, the kids are grown and gone and on their own and doing well, and that's great, and I have my job, but I still feel so alone. What can I do? Have you ever felt like that woman? A teenager offers you that rare peek into their inner thoughts. I'm not really sure who I am and, and what I really want to do. There's so many decisions to make, so hard, and I, I really don't know yet. I want to be free, yes, I want to be free of parents and school and all of those things, and yet I am so uncertain, and there's so much pressure. I don't know what I'm going to do. Have you ever felt like that teenager? Today's Old Testament reading tells us a story of dry bones, a valley full of them. And it tells us how hollow and empty and dry lives can become. The folks I just talked about, well, I've kind of blended together the stories of a number of people I've talked to over the years. And you know them too, because with some variation or shade a little different, they're really all of us at various times in our lives. You know them too, because we all know what it is to have a life without meaning or security or hope, like dry bones lying in a valley. It's almost kind of what it feels like these days, doesn't it? Ezekiel tells us that although we are too often lifeless, God can and will revive and restore us as he gives us new life each day by his word and spirit. Ezekiel was called to proclaim to God's people how the Lord himself would raise them from the tomb of their bondage to the Babylonians after years of war, countless deaths, and incredible suffering, Ezekiel is called to proclaim hope and life, real hope that is really living to a people who are without hope and life. Notice how quickly he gets to it. God takes Ezekiel to view the valley of dry bones, scattered and dead. They've been there a long time. It is a scene of absolute hopelessness, despair, and death. But God gives a word of hope for hopeless people. Can these bones live? God asks. Ezekiel rightly responds that only God knows the answer to that question, and then God graciously does answer. He promises they will live. And he invites Ezekiel to be a part of the process. Ezekiel was to prophesy, proclaim boldly the word of the Lord, and when he did, the bones came together, flesh covered them again, and new life would be breathed into them. Then you will know that I am the Lord, he promises, for you see, God alone gives life and gives new life to dry, dusty, hopeless lives. A single mother sighs, I have no time for myself. Life is just a grind from one day to the next, clothes to wash, meals to prepare, rushing to get to work, rushing to take care of the kids. And in between it all, there's never an, enough money or time, hopes and dreams for the future. Yeah, you got to be kidding me. I don't even know how I'm going to get through the day. 
Have you ever felt like that, mother? Are you a bag of dry, lifeless bones without hope for the future? How often in the last couple of weeks, and especially now under the new stay-at-home reality that we all face, have you felt cut off from life as it was meant to be lived, cut off from a life full of promise and peace, cut off from even the other folks that you are so near and dear to, who you long for so much right now. When we look out over the valley of life and see dry bones, ours or a neighbor's, God invites us to turn and look again. Dave Ramsey, he has a number of good sayings, and one of them is, when you find yourself at the bottom of a hole, stop digging and then look up. And when you look up, See the God who really is the one who made us and remakes us. He is the one who sustains us with his grace, and in his grace he gives us that incredible love, and with that love, the forgiveness that was earned for us by that perfect life, suffering, and death of our Savior Jesus Christ. Trust him anew to provide for your needs and lead you up out of that dry, dusty place of fear and anxiety, pain and grief, to that new life that God wants to give us all, that new life that God alone can give. God is present. He is very real. He is the ultimate truth, and the ultimate truth is for you. He lovingly desires to breathe new life into dry, dusty lives with that dynamic power that comes from him and leads us back to him. And so he gives us the gospel, not new rules, good news. And in his precious words of gift and gifts of sacrament and word, he points us again and again and again to Jesus. So what does this look like in our lives? Well, let me give you a couple of quick suggestions. One, a little girl picked up a dusty Bible that was laying on a shelf in a family home. She said, Mom, whose book is this? Mom quickly replies, well, it's God's book. And the little girl says, well, Mom, I think we ought to give it back. We're not using it. Is your Bible like that one? There's an easy remedy. Open it and read. And when you read, you will read of a Savior who came in real flesh and blood, who wept at the grave of his dear friend, who suffered and died in your place so that you don't have to stand before God, God's judgment on your own. Rejoice in the Lord whose resurrection victory gives a new life and a new life perspective to all that we go through in this life for all who believe. For God's word points us always to Jesus. Look for him as you read. For the good news of Jesus is still the power of God for the salvation to everyone who believes. And that includes you and me and so many more who still don't know just how much God really does love them. Second, if you want to see what that new life looks like, remember your baptism and live in it every day. The daily life of baptism is a daily cycle of repentance and renewal. Repentance of those sins that we have committed, lived in the memory and promise of leading you to Calvary, where we were united with Christ in both his death and in his resurrection so that we might lead a new life, new every day, as we remember that we are part of the family of God, chosen children of God. Live in that faith. Through his gospel gifts of word and sacrament, God wants to speak to you today and through that word to breathe new hope into your life. I will put my spirit in you 
and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. One last thing. You can be like Ezekiel. You can call the lost back to the shepherd, the good shepherd's side. You can say, thus says the Lord with confidence in a world turned in on itself and wandering blindly into inviting dry and dusty lives all around us to come and see Jesus. You really can. All you need to do is tell someone. Tell them of how God has come to you and breathed new life into you. Look for those open doors whenever you meet someone and have the opportunity with proper social distance, as we are told so often these days. But charge through when you can with God's love, God's care, that same love and care that raised you from spiritual death to new life in Christ, a life that goes on and on, and on. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We join now in confessing our Christian faith in the true triune God. Today we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to confess your faith with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended in, into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, your Spirit brought life to Israel in the valley of dry bones, and your Son raised Lazarus to life from the dead. Through Jesus' resurrection, fill us with the hope of eternal life as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, grant faithfulness and skill to those who labor in your harvest. We especially ask your blessing on all teachers and ministers of your word, that they may boldly proclaim your truth in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, of all you desire that all be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth, we ask that you would give to us and to your whole church passion to share the gospel of Christ with those outside the church by your Spirit, Turn them to you, the one true God, that in their Savior they find life and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of each day, in our everyday lives, help us to see our vocations as blessed callings from you. Lead us to daily do your will and serve our neighbor in response to your love for us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord of the nations, we pray for those in our government. Grant to them wisdom and guidance that they may govern justly and in ways that are pleasing in your sight. Grant healing and peace in our land that your word may be proclaimed freely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of body and soul, we commend into your loving care those who are suffering physically or spiritually among us. Especially we pray for Glo Livingston as she recovers from cancer surgery and contemplates what's next. We pray for Don Ledbetter who is hospitalized in serious condition with pneumonia. 
We pray for Lisa Davis as she continues treatments for cancer and for those others whose names and needs are known to us whom we bring before you now, Lord, in silence. According to your gracious will, grant them healing, restoration, and wholeness. Give them peace in knowing that you are with them always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the epidemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort all that mourn. Sustain all medical personnel and first responders in their labors and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. For the members of our congregation and especially for the Mark and Teresa Falls, Mary Lynn Fair, Nick and Amanda Ferguson and Linda Floyd families, that the Spirit might fill them and empower them to share the love of Jesus with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and your promise to hear us for the sake of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we would at this time we remind you that the work of the church goes on even amidst the uh, many challenges of the coronavirus crisis. We know that this has brought hardship to many and if that is your case, then God bless you. Give as you are able and as you are given to, but don't feel guilty if you can't either. Rather, Look to the Lord for the day when you can come again with joy to bring him your tithes and offerings. And for those who are able, continue to bring your gifts to the church. You can mail them to the church and they will be uh, recorded and deposited uh, as soon as they come in. And please know that we are working on a way to uh, be able to uh, give electronically that will be coming out to you soon. And now we join in the prayer that our Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We sing the closing hymn. Thank you. 